What is up, my fellow YouTubers? It's your favorite gothic bad boy, Moon Horse here. Sorry, I had to. Today's subject is absolutely this. I, I'm not even. I mean, it's not him, but it's called Goth Beard, and let's just let's just go. Let's just do this. When I first came across the Neckbeard subreddit, I had quite a few laughs at the stories, and then I realized I have a few Neckbeard stories of my own. This is a long one, but I think it's pretty good. It certainly makes me laugh, just recalling it. See, I started college back in 2010, and while I don't know if the term Neckbeard was a thing at the time, they were certainly around. I played ice hockey growing up, and I was just barely talented enough at it to get a few scholarship offers. Although I was told when I got on campus that I'd be rooming with another student athlete. Upon receiving my dorm assignment, I found out that due to record enrollment, I'd start my college career in a regular dorm instead. So I move in, and I'm in a quad, myself and three other guys. Two of them seem normal enough, but one is tall, very round, pale guy with small oval glasses. Dressed in all black with those stereotypical goth poofy black parachute pants with the spikes and the chains on them that could only have been a Hot Topic purchase. I distinctly remember that he also kept a very sparse beard that lined his chin in what seemed to be a half attempt at a bad chin strap style. I figured I'm going to be living with this guy, and although I could have made some accurate assumption by his initial appearance, I desperately wanted to make friends quickly, so I attempted a conversation. Gothbeard, aka GB from here on out, let me know very quickly that he was very private and that I should never go through his things. Although that felt like a weird statement, I agreed, because why would I want to go through his things? The quad had bunk beds, and in the first five minutes of our discussion, I noticed that Gothbeard had taken to a lower bunk and was unpacking what looked like shower rings and blackout curtains. In an effort to keep conversation lighthearted, I asked him about them. He quickly, without hesitation or shame, let me know that he had these curtains so that he could, quote, watch porn and anime privately. <sighs> oh! Okay. I always thought that it was weird that he mentioned both of those. And they were also so that he knew he would be able to bring women back to the room without having to worry about being spied upon. What the fuck? I kept this conversation cordial after that, but what the fuck, right? Yeah, that's why I just said it. What the fuck? I mentally told myself that I wouldn't have to spend a ton of time in the dorm with him since I'd be starting daily conditioning with the team in the next couple of weeks, and I'd get to move to another dorm next semester. Anywho, the next few weeks, I didn't really have to talk with GB much. Although he was seemingly always in the room, his curtain was almost always closed, I started to avoid the dorm as much as possible as I noticed the room started to smell like unwashed socks. Ew. Instead, I started hanging out with some guys down the hall that would leave their room door open all the time, and they'd mostly play sports video games like Madden and FIFA and stuff like that. By hanging out in their open room, I quickly met almost the entire dorm floor, including a couple of really nice girls. One of them, we'll call her Elle, started coming down to the gamer room pretty frequently just to hang out with us. One evening, we're playing Madden as usual, and Gothbeard appeared in the open doorway. Despite the fact that I technically lived with him, I hadn't seen him in about four days. He said, I'm disappointed. I was hoping there were some real gamers here, but I see you all only like to play trash games. Jocks are all the same. Really, bro? And then he left. We all just kind of looked at each other awkwardly, and after I explained that he was my roommate, we all had a laugh about it. It also became apparent that Elle wasn't into games, but she wanted to hang out with the guys. Over the following days, we realized we had a mutual interest in each other, and we started dating. The relationship started fast, but hey, we're freshmen, and it was nice to have a girlfriend while trying to navigate this new world that was college life. Anyway, my hockey schedule picked up, and I had less and less time to hang out in my dorm with friends or Elle, 
GB would audibly grumble at me when I would get out of bed at 6 a.m. to go to practice, despite the fact there wasn't anything I could do to change that. Some weeks I would travel for games, and GB would make comments about how he could finally bring a lady or two over. Although I never saw him with any girls. Ever. One day, after getting home from an away game, I met up with Elle to watch a movie. I was exhausted, so I was looking forward to spending some time with her. Her roommate was loudly talking on the phone in their room, so she walked with me to my room. I flicked on the light, and no one seemed to be around. GB's curtain was closed, so I asked if he was there. No response. This was the first time my room had been empty, so we took the opportunity to have a little makeout session with Elle on my bed. I pulled off her shirt, and she was in just a bra, and we continued. And that's when I heard it. A distinct, ugh, ugh, muttered from the bunk across the room. I turn and look up to see GB's curtain pulled back halfway, with him shirtless and his arm making movements. I'm extremely thankful now that that curtain was only halfway pulled back. Oh my god! And then, without missing a beat, he says something I will never forget. Oh, what are you looking at me for? Keep going. I threw the covers over Elle and she put her shirt back on, then I got out of bed and said, What the fuck, man? I asked if you were here. To which he calmly replied, I know. I voided my room as much as I could for the rest of the semester. I don't think I had more than one more conversation during that time with him. The following semester, I was able to move to a student-athlete dorm, and L came over most days. If not for GB, I would have stayed, but that guy was something else. It wasn't far from the original dorm hall. She told me that GB had assumed that by moving away that I had dumped her, and that he had started texting her regularly regarding his affections for her. Ew. He even referred to me as, quote, obviously abusive meathead. Real fucking classy. And that she deserves a gentleman like himself that would basically worship her. He later went on to ask her for nudes. Of course he did. Then he went on an angry text tirade after she turned him down. Of course he did. And he threw a fit about it in front of her and a bunch of my friends, citing that he had seen her in her underwear already, so what was the big deal? The fuck, dude? I wish I was there to see that one. The last I remember of him, he was whining in a super obviously directional way on social media about how women don't appreciate or value kind men. Eh. No, dude, she has a boyfriend. You're weird as hell, and you're not kind. I have no idea what GB is up to these days, but I hope he was able to straighten himself out a bit. A little bit of bonus content for you. I totally forgot this until after I finished writing this post. This guy had a black leather choker necklace with spikes that he wore sometimes. It also had a single half-loop metal buckle that looked like a dog collar. On the side, it had the word GUR embroidered into it. Only one time did I ever ask about it. While choker necklaces were common with goths, this one seemed especially made just for some kind of BDSM fetish thing or something. GB told me that his necklace was for special use only, and that he liked to be dominated. Cool. I'm glad I never saw him with an actual woman because I would have had to imagine things that I'm sure I could never unsee. Oh, wow. Just. Wow, dude. I, I don't even have words for what the actual fuck we just heard. Like. Seriously, I. your style is your style, okay? I have no problem with that. If you want to be a this guy, you can totally be a this guy. But it's when you start, like, shitting on people for things and then, like, weirdly watching your roommate, like, make out and get a little handsy with their significant other. Bruh, you're fucking disgusting, my man. That is really gross. That is like 10 kinds of ew. Oh my god.
I, oh wow, I can't even imagine being in the same room with somebody like that. Just, and the fucking audacity of it. Just keep going. Like, fuck off, you creep. <laughs> like, holy shit, man. That is some next level wrong. Oh, dude. I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm just, you know what? I have nothing else to add. That was just super gross, and I really wanted to share that with you all. That's in your brain now. Congratulations. You get to keep that. Have fun. I love you. And if you enjoy this channel, <laughs> make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to, you know, keep the lights on so I can keep doing whatever the hell it is I'm doing here, I have a Ko-Fi, and I have a merch store. I'm always adding weird new stuff to the merch store, so make sure to check it out. There's no telling what is in there at this point. I, I, I added everything. It's just all there. <laughs> Anywho, I love you guys so very much, and I'll see you in the next episode. I forgot the word episode for a second. I'm, I'm good. I'm a professional. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>